So, what was I, you know, I said, well, we're keeping the total energy constant. Why, why can I say that? You didn't question me, I just told you that, but you should question it. This is science, you should ask questions. Well, you have <laughs> well, you just took me for granted that I said the total energy was constant on that swing. Why? Why can I, in this case, it's definitely an approximation, obviously, the, the squeaky hinges on the top of the swing are going, ee, ee. You make that energy coming out of that, right? The sound. But, strange energy. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> it's because you're not getting higher, you're not getting lower. Well, right, Swing. right. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretending that we went to Walmart and bought perfect hinges for our swing that were completely frictionless. And so all the energy went into our back and forth motion. I see. That's not Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying no such hinge. Uh, I'm trying to imply that no such hinge yeah. exists. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so Isaac Newton, he wrote down his law of conservation of energy. He said that energy in equals energy out. So energy into a system, energy out of a system. They must equal each other. Now, did he prove it? No, nope. he just, He's just saying. based on what I have observed, the amount of energy in must equal the amount of energy out. He didn't prove it, he simply made the statement, and for 350 years we've been trying to prove him wrong, and we can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> therefore, as far as we know, it's definitely true. We have never found a case where it's not, ever. That's cool. So we can't prove it true, but we definitely can't prove it false. We can't prove it true because every case. Well, we it, it, every it's what you call first principle in physics. The knowledge of the laws. The laws in physics, mm -hmm. it's not that they proved them true, it's just that it's impossible to prove them false. They haven't ever found a way to prove them false. They always seem to hold true. And so it's called a first principle. Or a law. Okay, so now you have some idea of what potential and kinetic energy are. So, right, on page 266, they wrote down the formula. They wrote potential energy. I wrote E sub P. They, they write PE, which, yeah, that's a little confusing. I prefer first piece of E. But, but, but if you write nice big E, now you know you're dealing with energy, right? Yeah. All right. So PE could mean something else. And, and then they wrote MGH. So they really should have subscripted that. That's potential energy due to gravity. But you can have a potential energy due to electric field. In fact, you do. In the old style televisions, the direction of the electric field was horizontal. It had nothing to do with gravity. So they shoot electrons through it and there's a potential in there. And the electrons would shoot through and cause them, the, the electric field would vary and cause the electrons to bend in, a, in the, let's see, if it's going that way, that way, it should bend in the up and down direction. And that's how, that's how it, it goes across this way to draw your picture on the old monitors computer monitors, TVs, they draw a picture this way. So it would vary the electric field so that the electron would be on this line. And once all the electrons are going through would hit this line, and they'd vary the magnetic field to make it move from right to left. And then they'd reset the magnetic field, and draw the next line, and change the electric field just a little bit so that they hit the next line down. And it'd do that 30 times a second, draw the whole screen. Cool. And so that's a potential that isn't MGH, that's just max. Okay. So, 
energy and matter. In reality, everything, according to Einstein anyway, everything is energy. Because why? What did he write down? What famous equation? Yes. yes. Energy <laughs> equals mc squared. Now, does that have the right units? Does that have joules? You don't know. You don't know. You tell me. Well, what what are the units again? Kilograms. Do we have kilograms here? Yep. Okay. In meters per second. You need meters squared over meters seconds. Squared over seconds. Okay, so what's C? <laughs> light. Speed, speed of light. Speed of light. And what are the units on per speed? Second. Meters over seconds. And that's squared. It's so the yeah. units must be it squared. So it's also it meters squared over seconds squared. So really, everything is energy. And in fact, Let's suppose we have one kilogram of water. Okay. Okay. Do you have your calculators with you? Nope. I do. Okay. How much energy would be in one kilogram of water using this formula? What's the speed of light squared? So the speed of light, C, equals three Point zero zero times ten to the eighth meters per second. So that's meters per seconds. And we have one kg kilogram times c squared. Oh, well, that's just c squared. It's just c squared. So type in c squared. Three point. That number, now we need to square it. Yeah. It's nine to the sixteenth joules. Or not nine, nine times ten to the sixteenth joules. We use about about I wanna say about seven times 10 to the seventh joules of energy in the entire country per year. That's one kilogram of water. So if you divide that, I, I may be too small on that, but divide that, and how many years would that kilogram of water supply the entire country with electricity if you convert it all into energy? This again. So no, you already have that number, don't you? Divided by seven. Make sure you put parentheses around it. Yeah. 
this is correct. It's six point three. So there you go. Got this, this is trying to see that again. Is that the amount of years? Yeah. If I'm right about that usage in a year. It might be days too, but it's still quite a number of days. Good one kill and fire. <laughs> it does. Well, I read somewhere that they could successfully convert one what was it, molecule of water. They could be able to send how many rockets in space? I think it was 100. One molecule of water? Well, it would have quite a bit. I don't know. Maybe Not cubic sure. centimeters. They could send a lot. There's a lot of energy. The trouble is cold fusion, which is what you'd have to use, is not available. You'd have to convert it all into energy. You can't really do that. No. no. So primarily, you use different forms of energy. Now the book divides it up into quite a few different ones. <clears throat> but really there's only two main forms of, well, energy. not talking about potential, we're talking about kinetic energy. The book divides it up into several different forms, and I'll try to clarify to you this afternoon, I guess, since we're all out of time, uh, as I talk about them, what, there's really only two forms. There's, there's electromagnetic energy and mechanical energy. And everything else that we're going to talk about is either one of those two forms. And so this afternoon when we get to this I will try to, I'll explain you what each one is, but I'll also try to tell you that this is a form of this type of energy or that type of energy. So that you maybe have a little better idea of how to categorize that energy. They do say some. So, um, since we'll probably get through the classification of energy up to momentum this afternoon. Sections 12A and 12B are assigned for Tuesday of next week. And we'll talk about momentum on Tuesday. I guess I'll let you go and I'll see you this afternoon. Gretchen.